Good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to see you once again on the five day ISO challenge. And I am so delighted to be able to share these pieces of information that I believe are truly going to make a difference in not only the lives of anybody who listens to it but I can tell you when I do the research when I put these things into practice and I've been doing this for many years now I realize that these are simple things but they truly have a potential of making a sustained long-term effect in your overall health and well-being so with this brief introduction on what I'm talking about, which is the power beyond prescription, which is the title of my forthcoming book. How do we use simple power tools? That's what I call them. These are power tools to be able to unlock our body's own innate healing abilities. And today we are going to be talking about exercise. Now I know what you think when you when anybody tells you that you should exercise and well, you say you know yeah I'm, I'm a bit tired and um, I just don't feel like doing it or it's too cold or too hot there is a reason for that but I'll tell you those are precisely the reasons that we need to do exercise and I'll delve upon this in further detail but for sake of simplicity and to create a better level of understanding I'm going to divide the benefits of exercise into the physical component which is for the body then for the mind and then for the soul yes you might find it very controversial that what could be the benefits of exercise for your spiritual health you know but I truly believe that if you want to unlock the real healing ability that rests in our bodies, you've got to understand that you have to address the body, the mind and the soul. Okay. Now, there was a famous physician who I can't quote his name who said that if you do not make time for exercise, you will have to make time for disease. Now, we are finding this so true, but let me firstly define what exercise is to me, because to you it may have a different meaning to somebody else. See, exercise is of three key categories that I love to engage in. I have a routine, I love to follow that routine, and the exercise that I do is of three predominant categories. The first category of exercise is that of what is called as resistance training. Resistance training is when you do some weights, you actually provide resistance for your muscles, which cause them those small, whenever you provide resistance, it causes the muscles to tear and then they heal again. And that is what releases the growth mechanism in the muscle. Okay, so that's the first type of exercise. The second is cardio type exercise. Now cardio type exercise really is a kind of exercise which builds your cardiovascular stamina. <clears throat> this is what is called as endurance. Your ability to endure a task, a physical task for a period of time. And the third is I call them flexibility, stretching or balancing type exercises. Now what comes in this is categories or exercises like Pilates and yoga, those sort of Qigong, Tai Chi, those kind of, you know, uh, mind body exercises because they cause you to flex, cause you to stretch and also create that mind body connection. So three kinds of exercises, you can pick up any specific activities that allow you to build, say, you know, you could be doing dumbbells, you could be doing kettlebells. As far as cardio type goes, you could be doing running, hiking, swimming, whatever suits you. So there is no restriction on the type of activity, but I'm giving you the broad class of the activity. So let's see the benefits of the exercise firstly on your physical body. And I think clearly many of us experience issues around tiredness, fatigue, pain and all of that. But I'll tell you one thing, 
Exercise is a really good fitness strategy, but if you are using exercise to just try and overcome the guilt of having, say, a whole tub of, and I'm just making this up, a whole tub of, you know, the triple fudge sundae or a whole chocolate pud uh, a sticky date pudding, well, that's the wrong reason to be doing exercise. I've always said exercise is a great fitness strategy, not a good weight loss strategy. So, for fitness, it is really important to understand, as Jim Rohn said, take good care of your body. This is the only place you have to live. So what he meant by this truly is he understood the power of exercise that it has for your physical body. Your exercise reduces the risk of you developing chronic diseases. Yesterday and day before, I talked about the chronic disease epidemic that we are all swept, swept under in our society, which is leading to things like diabetes, heart problems. What exercise is doing is, exercise reduces your risk of developing insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is what causes men especially and women too, to gain more belly fat. Belly fat is the fat which is actually the unhealthy fat which is going to increase your risk of fatty liver, type 2 diabetes, heart problems and related things. But here is the key part. Exercise has now been found to reduce your risk of developing cancers, bowel cancer, endometrial cancer, prostate cancer and pancreatic cancer. How would you say that just a trip of 15 to 20 minutes to the gym is going to actually reduce your risk over the long term of developing those cancers? This is where I think it is really pertinent to delve into the science behind it. So besides this, you would have heard of conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue is a condition where people are feeling tired, there is no energy. But what evidence and studies are telling us is simply engaging in some sort of physical activity causes that vicious cycle to be broken. Because more fatigue requires more rest, more rest, m lack of drive. And that one thing is feeding the other. And I remember growing up in the medical circles is that, you know, when uh, we would have individuals with chronic fatigue. Well, we were really cautious in offering surgery to those individuals. But now let us look at what are the mental aspects. The, the one thing that I forgot about as far as the body goes is the physical benefit of strengthening of the muscles and the bones that comes with doing physical exercise. Because as we know, uh, women Postmenopausal women especially experience the risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia, which is where the bones become weak. Well, exercise is the best antidote. And also it reduces the risk of falls and injuries as the aging process kicks in. But here is what is very important coming to the mental aspects of the exercise itself. Exercise releases happy hormones. I can attest to it every time I go for a run. I may be in the worst of the mental states. I may be swept in an ocean of all the negative emotions, as we say sometimes. But I tell you, putting my AirPods on and just going for a run or going for a cycle ride allows me to totally shift my perspective about life. And you know what, as Wayne Dyer said, that when you shift the way you look at things, what you look at changes. Every time I've come back from a run, from an exercise, or from just an intense bout of physical activity, I have somehow come back with a renewed perspective to the problem that I was facing. So, the other aspect which is for your mind and mind is as we discussed yesterday is nothing but brain in action exercise releases this hormone called brain uh, bdnf brain derived neurotropic factor which means that what the exercise is doing is it is causing the brain to release this specific protein it's a factor which causes 
the brain to grow new neurons. It improves your memory. And that is an amazing benefit of the, uh, uh, of the exercise itself. Besides this, exercise can allow you to fall into a routine which will allow you better sleep, better relaxed sleep. I'm not saying that you exercise very close to bedtime as some people may do that they go to the gym in the evening and then they come back that can disrupt your sleep cycle because exercise also causes release of the cortisol hormone which is the stress hormone and you need enough time for it to settle down but here is the interesting bit now and which is what i'm going to be talking about the spiritual benefits of exercise See, the first and the fo foremost thing that, as I just mentioned to you, is that exercise allows us to feel happy. It allows us to feel alive. Sh being able to shift our perspective in difficult situations is a mark of the maturity, the mental and the spiritual maturity of the individual. That's how I've always come to understand it that for us to react is very easy but for us to respond takes courage and that's where I think exercise does not necessarily always have to be an intense run even going for a walk in nature in proximity of nature as Wayne Dyer used to say wilderness can be therapy which means whether you go for a hike in nature, go for a swim, go for a boat ride or a cycle ride, whatever it may be for you, I truly believe that exercise allows us that ability to ground ourselves, to immerse ourselves and very importantly, be in the moment. Because so many times we are only swayed by whatever has happened in the past or the anxiety of what is coming from the future. We just haven't learned how to be in the moment. And I think when we go to nature, this is what I learn all the time. When I'm in nature, I actually see the animals, the bees and the birds and how they are just in the moment, you know. And that really allows me to shift my perspective from my worries, from my concerns, from my fears, from my insecurities to actually say, you know what? Life is so beautiful. Life is happening in this very moment when I can see all this beauty that nature is displaying all around. So think of it in that way. I truly believe spirituality is not just, uh, you know, shaving your head and wearing a robe and, you know, heading off to the mountains. I think spirituality is in the day to day moment of our living. The other way how I look at exercise in sp and spirituality is your growth. Now, what do I mean by that? See, exercise requires willpower. All right. Willpower causes you to go beyond your comfort zones. If you don't have will, you will never be able to achieve anything substantial. I still remember what Bob Proctor said once about this story that he quotes when the father of the NASA program, this is during the times of John F. Kennedy, when man had not even touched the moon, there was only a dream. Uh, President John F. Kennedy asked, um, uh, the, the president of the NASA program, his name was, um, I'm forgetting his name just now, but he, he asked the question, what is it going to take for uh, Buck Minister Fuller? That's, that's what his name, Bucky's. He asked Bucky, what is it going to take for us to take a man to the moon and bring him back safely? And Bucky's response was just five words, the will to do it. The will to do it. Willpower is your mental faculty, which is truly guided by your spiritual growth. Now, if you believe in something, you will have the will to do it. But if you don't believe in a higher source that is giving you protection, that is giving you guidance, well, you will always be self-doubting yourself. 
That's how I look at it. So when I go for a run on a cold morning, or here is the other thing that I do, which is not really an exercise, but it is a physical activity, is stepping into the cold shower in the morning. Well, I always think about it, oh my God, let me warm up a little bit more. You know, let me just uh, let the shower warm up a little bit because when I turn it on, it's always cold in the morning and we are in winters at the moment. But I say, nope. I'm not going to let my mind take over today. So I'm going to get into the shower when it is cold. And there are significant benefits of cold showering, which we I'll not go into it right now. But again, it's a test of my will. And I always struggle with it in the morning. But I know that I have to get over it. And I do that. I don't do that with the sense of, you know, I have to fight it. But I know there is growth in it. So think about it that way, that we all have fears. We all have doubts and inhibitions. But this is what is going to allow us to overcome or get out of our comfort zone and try something new with that feeling of trust. And I think what is really important is that exercise allows you the focus. So when you are in the moment, you actually become really focused. And uh, Mikhail Nikmajic uh, wrote this book and his book was The, the Flow. So there is this flow zone and that zone is when you're just in the moment, brilliant ideas just download. They just come as a download into your conscious mind such that you get a beautiful way of how you can orchestrate and bring your work forth to the world to look at. So think about it in a way that these are some of the lateral benefits of exercise. See. I think the most important thing is that I did not know about all these benefits until I started doing the research. I was feeling the benefits. But when I actually started doing the research, I realized, oh my God, these are some of the benefits that I've actually experienced. I've experienced these for many years since I have now been doing exercise in a very regimented and a structured way. But I said, I need to bring it out for the benefit of everyone. And that's where I feel the power of awareness lies. When you are exercising and you're doing something like say yoga, and when I do, uh, like I'm currently in isolation, but I still love to do my yoga in the morning, my sun salutation. And what I realize is that my body, sometimes there are those aches and there are those pains. And whenever I experience those aches and pains, I bless my body and I say, you know, I bless you. You have allowed me the freedom and the ability to experience this beautiful world. I send healing energy to you. And that somewhere in that lies our ability to unlock our own healing abilities. So something to think about. I'm not saying that I have unlocked the code of how or I've cracked the formula of how to actually uh, sort of heal our body in that context. But I think unless we all collectively start to think about it, we will probably always be stuck in our comfort zones and we will always seek out for a prescription to heal us. And that's where the power beyond prescription comes in. So thank you once again for joining me for this Facebook Live. I hope you found it insightful. Uh, and I'd love for you to join me once again for tomorrow's session, which will be at the same time, 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Until that time, take care and stay blessed.